Welcome to Legends, a series that delves into the lore within Horizon Forbidden West. When it comes to events in the history of the game, none are more impactful or as tragic as the Pharaoh Plague, a small rogue swarm of chariot line robots in the South Pacific that in just over a year's time would bring about global extinction. An unstoppable apocalypse, only salvaged by the work of Dr. Sobek in Project Zero Dawn that would bring the planet back to life centuries later. Though the consequences of the plague are well known, and set the stage for Aloy's journey in the 31st century, this hasn't stopped many in the community from speculating ways in which the Pharaoh Plague may have been stopped, or question why Zero Dawn was the only viable option to survive it. So with the stage set, let's explore why total victory for the swarm was inevitable, and why the best option for Earth's continued survival was entrusted to Gaia and her subordinate functions. First, let's highlight what made the Pharaoh's rogue chariot line so unstoppable, the four main factors specifically, unhackable security, force manipulation, biomass conversion, and self-replication. With their cryptographic protocols utilizing polyphasic entangled waveforms, brute forcing deactivation would take roughly 50 years, far longer than the estimated 15 months humanity had before Zero Day would come to pass. The moment these bots stopped responding to stand-down codes, deactivation was no longer a viable option. Due to superior technology, the swarm could slave enemy robots to their own network, making the world's many automated war fleets completely powerless to combat the growing threat. Biomass conversion paired with self-replication ensured that as long as there was life to be consumed, Horus-class titans could produce an endless supply of scarabs and kopeshes to overwhelm the forces of enduring victory. These factors combined would ultimately make victory for those in the 21st century impossible. Though these are the main reasons, there are many smaller details that would also thwart humanity's effort to defeat the swarm. When examining the history of this extinction event, many have asked why early containment and eradication wasn't attempted. After all, destroying a small group of pharaoh bots compromised by the glitch would be the best way to stop the plague before it really had a chance to begin. Unfortunately, this solution was never viable, a cataclysmic error that can also be laid at the feet of one Ted Pharaoh. When reports first started emerging from the Hearts Timor swarm, instead of using this invaluable time to take steps to eradicate the affected units, his resources were spent attempting to patch the issue, suppress negative media coverage, and organize legal defenses for over a hundred lawsuits that were being levied against FAS relating to the incidents. By the time Pharaoh became desperate enough to reach out to his former lead scientist, its rate of replication had already reached the point of no return, with Dr. Sobek calculating it would take a mere 15 months to strip the entire planet. In the words of General Aaron Harris during The Bad News, by the time the glitch was noticed, it was already too late. Nothing could stop the Pharaoh Plague. Nothing can. With the plague in full swing, the next line of questioning when it comes to defeating the robotic horde are the countermeasures and weaponry used by Operation Enduring Victory. Many have asked why EMPs or nuclear weapons weren't utilized against the swarm, but the frightening truth is, they were. In Horizon Zero Dawn data points like the bad news and biosphere degradation, we see records of the nuclear option being utilized, but sparingly. Full-scale nuclear engagement would have only accelerated biosphere degradation, decreasing the amount of time humanity could hold off the swarm, not increase it. The use of EMPs was standard operating procedure for mechanized response brigades during engagements with the swarm, but once again, couldn't stop the swarm outright. Even more concerning, we learn in Forbidden West that the BOR-7 Horus was capable of manufacturing and weaponizing its own EMP cells against human defenses, putting our electronics at risk as well. Enduring Victory did have aerial superiority and was harnessing it to great effect, but we can see images from the time like aerial capture northeast that the swarm also had anti-air countermeasures as well. Jets, tanks, battleships, direct energy weapons, EMPs, and nukes were all thrown at the plague, but none proved to be the silver bullet that could defeat the entire swarm. 
Knowing this, some have wondered, with only crude weapons by comparison, how were those like Aloy able to bring down these devastating machines in the 31st century? Here's what's important to remember when it comes to the Pharaoh Chariot line. Survivability is different than durability. Nanohay's biomass conversion ensured the machines were always able to fuel themselves, but Enduring Victory never had a problem bringing down the machines. They simply just couldn't do it fast enough. Data points like Log Corporal Acosta A and Just a Little Longer describe slaughtering machines in mass, even bringing down Horuses, but the sheer numbers of the swarm were ultimately insurmountable. Aloy and her allies have never had to face down more than a few chariot line machines at a time. Even during the Siege of Meridian, where the Eclipse sent the full might of their ancient shadows against the Karja capital, doesn't compare to the kind of relentless onslaught faced by Enduring Victory. So, in short, a skilled hunter like Aloy against one or so pharaoh bots that are centuries old is an entirely different beast. With most of the world's military forces adopting automated machines of war in favor of human combatants by the mid-2050s, humanity was also woefully ill-prepared for a threat like the plague. Not only were non-chariot line machines entirely ineffective against the threat, but could be a massive liability if turned against their former masters. This set any and all who would stand against the plague a step behind from the onset. Former military personnel were called back to service, but most of Enduring Victory forces were hastily trained civilian guard brigades. They would all fight valiantly, but each engagement with the Swarm would only wear down our defenses while they used machine learning to adjust and hone their tactics until there were none left to carry on the fight. So no matter what the proposed solution may be, the ultimate Achilles heel to salvation in the 21st century comes down to rate of replication. Designed countermeasures to the swarm like adamantine wreath could have ensnared and starved them into submission if deployment could have kept pace, but its replication outpaced this ability by an estimated 375%. Targeted strikes from near-Earth asteroids used for mining might have done some damage, but the lack of precision could have backfired on human forces as well. This rate of production also ramped up biomass conversion, quickening the collapse of the Earth's biosphere. Contaminating global rainfall with toxins created by the swarm's consumption, eventually making the atmosphere of the planet completely unlivable by November of 2065. Survival off-world would ultimately prove successful for those aboard the Odyssey, but would matter little to the masses they abandoned on Earth. Though mining operations had been firmly established on the moon by the time of the plague, they evidently were not designed as self-sufficient colonies capable of long-term survival. The HZD data point Counselor Guidelines 1 cements this and more, stating, It is essential to stress that all other options for combating the Pharaoh Plague and preserving the continuation of human life have been considered and found unworkable. Communicate this fact calmly, but clearly and firmly. Familiarize yourself with data on the catastrophic environmental impact of nuclear engagements versus the swarm, addendum B1, and unfeasibility of maintaining life in orbital, lunar, or undersea structures, addenda C1, C2, C3, so that you can counter candidates' objections in depth. Even after all this, there may be some that still feel like the plague could have been stopped or survived by most, but to me, the timetable and capabilities of the swarm only cements its inevitability. Hubris and culpability made early eradication a non-starter. Humanity's many automated war fleets were utterly useless, while the swarm's reproduction ensured victory on the battlefield while simultaneously ravaging the planet. Like a force of nature, cold and uncaring, humanity would fall. But thankfully, not before the functional completion of Project Zero Dawn. But with the coming threat that streaks across the stars, could this ancient plague also hold the secret to Earth's salvation? Only time will tell, as these machines have once again retired to their timeless slumber. And that brings our journey to an end. If you'd like to see more content like this, likes and shares are always appreciated. And if you're hungry for more Horizon lore, consider subscribing and checking out the rest of our lore library. 
A special thanks to the Horizon community at large for sharing their thoughts and observations about objections to the plague. And as always, thanks for watching and keep questing.